serpentone, which translates to a big snake. It's also known as anguile a lago trasimeno, the eels of lago trasimeno. And you can make them two ways. You can either make them using all almond paste to shape the eels, or you can do what we're going to do today, which is to make a raised sweetened yeast dough. And to do it, you want to start by proofing some yeast in warm water. So here is one cup of warm water, about 110, 115 degrees. You can always gauge that by using an instant read thermometer. And then we're just using active dry instant yeast, and you want one and a half teaspoons of that dissolved in the water. And then you let this sit around, oh, for about five minutes or so, until it looks like this. You see the, how chalky that looks? That is what we mean by proofed yeast. So once it's proofed, then we can begin the recipe. So in a large bowl, put the yeast water mixture. And to it, we want to add a little bit of olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, two tablespoons, and then two tablespoons of sugar goes in, and a quarter of a teaspoon of salt goes in. Then we have unbleached all-purpose flour at the ready, and I have about three cups of flour. So you add this a little bit at a time, getting this all worked in to the liquid mixture. So get your mixture into a rough state. This is what we call the shaggy mass. And then once you have it somewhat together, you can take it out onto a board and start to knead this. So now we're going to take all that out and save the bowl because we're going to use that to put the dough back in. Now we knead this and you see three cups of flour was just about right, but if it starts to stick to your board, well, then you take a little extra flour. Not too much, because you don't want to make this a really hard dough. Take a little bit of flour at a time, about a tablespoon or so at a time, and work it into the dough. And this is a nifty gadget to use when you're working with dough, a bench knife. That helps to gather up all the little bits of dough that are stuck to your board. So knead it until it's in a nice, smooth ball. Something like that. Looks good, doesn't it? And then take a little bit of olive oil, put it in the bowl, because now you're going to let the dough rise. So take your ball of dough, I kind of wipe the bowl with it, turn it over, and put a piece of plastic wrap over the top this will help keep the heat in and allow this dough to rise. It's going to take, oh, maybe an hour and a half. You want it to double in size. And here we have two kinds of raisins. We've got golden and we have dark. And I love to flavor this with this. This is called Vin Santo. It is a dessert wine. So you want about three tablespoons. Do this early in the day because you want these to macerate while you're doing the rest of the recipe. So you set that aside. So here we have some dried prunes. Now we have some figs. These are dried figs and when you get them they're going to have the stem on. So you want to take that off because you don't want to be eating that. And do the same. So you need five, about five dried prunes. You need five dried figs. You also want to add some apples to this. So two delicious apples would be great, just diced up, or you could slice them in thin slices. You want these in fairly small pieces because you're going to be putting this in the dough and then rolling the dough up. Here's my apple mixture, and the rest of the fruits go in, and now the raisins that have been marinating go in with their liquid. And now we want walnuts. So here are some walnuts, about a half a cup. Don't want to use walnuts? Use almonds. 
use whatever nuts you prefer. So chop them up coarsely. Okay, there are our walnuts all in. And now we want about two tablespoons of sugar. That goes in. And, oh, about a tablespoon or so of extra virgin olive oil. Now we mix this around. So once you have this all together, then you just set this aside and work on the dough. And here we have one that's been rising. And when I can do that, and those indentations remain there without popping back up at me, I know that that dough is ready. So now we want to knock down the air and what we're doing here is distributing the gluten as we do this in the dough. Take it out onto your board. Look at how light and fluffy that looks. It's beautiful. Now if we had too much flour in that, it'd be really tough to roll. So now what we need to do is roll this out. So I want to give it a couple needs. I just love to have my hands in nice silky dough. And now we need a little flour, and we need elbow grease, and we need un mattarello, which is an Italian rolling pin. So we're going to make one big serpent out of this, a serpentone, which means a big serpent. But if you didn't want to make a big serpent, you can make tiny little baby serpents. OK, so now we want to roll this out. I want to get this to about an 18 inch diameter. Now another indication of dough that is nicely relaxed is dough that doesn't slap back at you, doesn't spring back at you. And you see how this dough is nicely relaxed and it's easy to roll out. And you just keep going from edge to edge, turn the dough over every now and then. Add more flour if you think it's sticking to the board. If it isn't, don't add any flour. Now you don't want to roll the dough so thin that you're going to create a hole because then all of the filling will come through. That looks good. Make sure you're going to be able to lift it up some. Now our filling. And here it is. And we take it and spread this out to within two inches or so of the edges, because you're going to be folding those edges in. OK. Now you have ready a bake sheet with a piece of parchment on it. And here you roll this up as if you were doing a jelly roll, just like that. So you tuck in the ends as you go to keep all of that filling in. Tuck it all in. And then when you get to the end, you want to make sure that you tighten and tuck the bottom so that it doesn't all fall apart. OK, now you have ready. I like to do this on a rimless cookie sheet, because then it's easier to get it off. Take it on, and this is where you do the forming. So you form it into a serpent shape by leaving the head a little larger than the tail. Just like this. Just like that. Now we have to let him rise. Oh, for about 30 or 35 minutes, you cover him up. So just take one egg, and you want to beat that up slightly with a fork. This is going to give a nice shine to this. Then you take and brush this all over the serpentone. Here's some coarse sugar. Look at that. Isn't that nice? You can find that in, in a, uh, a bakery shop type store. And this goes all over the top. So put a good hailstorm on. Then take a scissors or a little knife, something, 
and make a little slit like that, you see? Just a little slit right there, and then one right there. It looks good without eyes. And then I take either raisins, or these are dried cranberries, shove it right there for the eyes, and then here, a little whole almond for the mouth. And now, this goes into the oven to bake. 375 degrees for about 30 or 35 minutes. When it comes out, it's gonna look something like this. Each one is going to be individual, believe me. Now let me show you what that looks like inside. You wanna let this cool down now before you serve it. Look at that. Look at how beautiful. What a work of art.